Hey you guys, today I'm going to talk about Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 14. Um, this was the season finale, but they gave us the season finale and the reunion tonight at the same time. Well, back to back. But I'm going to do separate videos, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's go on and get on to this season finale. Um, it was okay. It kind of gave you a little closure to some people, but not all people to me. Um... Monice and Nikki go and see Tierra at rehab, but like must be down the street from rehab. Like we ain't had no friends at family day. We ain't filming on our site because we gonna go over here. I was just confused, but um, you can tell that Tierra is like looking better. Um, but you could tell she still well. She let us know that she still had um feelings like mad feelings towards her friends for um like basically pushing her into rehab that's how she felt she felt like she was being pressured into rehab but she noticed that it was a good thing for her to get herself together start thinking about herself and stuff like that and i don't think that they were doing anything in um trying to be malicious towards her um but when she told her friends of when she get back, she don't know if she's going to be dealing with certain people. And Monice understood where she was coming from. So, Monice was like, as a friend, if that's what it takes, if it has, if it takes for me to fall back for you to get yourself together, so be it. You know what I'm saying? Nikki was getting on my nerves because Nikki was trying to make it seem like Monice and her friends wasn't there for Tierra, but she was there for Tierra. And I'm sitting there like, no, boo-boo. Monice was initiating a lot of the let's get our friends some help so for her to try to go at Monice like that I was like she foul um she says there's no more Cisco and I'm just like good but whatever like I said she just felt like she wants to get back to her music so I hope she focused on that and not be so she just seemed a lot bitter but i understand her but i was like i thought she was there for 30 days it seemed like we've been going weeks and weeks of stuff that's been going on since her going to rehab and i'm like mm, okay y'all filming and editing is so off trying to say this to the end was stupid to me if she was only doing 30 days but whatever this is in the studio um, Ray, with Ray J, and he comes in there with Ray J or whatever, Ray J's at the piano, and they supposed to have a vibe session, but what Fizz didn't tell Ray was that Jay Boog was going to be coming through, he didn't tell, no, I think he told Jay, Ray, but he didn't tell Jay Boog about Ray, so, you know, I just felt like this was going to go left real, real quick because of the miscommunication, and it did. Ray was our, before Jay Bull came in, was like, I got a lot of ideas. And I'm just like, oh, here we go with Ray and his ideas. So when J Jay Bull come in and say he didn't know about Ray J was going to be there, it was a surprise to him. Then Ray J started talking about he was going to be the new Omarion. And I'm sitting there like, this is not the way you start off a meet, especially with a dude that didn't know you was going to be there. Um, he's not really on board of B2K getting back together. Then he come out with these posters and all this kind of stuff talking about he Ray, it's going to be Ray 2K or B2 Ray. I'm just like, I told y'all last week this was not going to go well. I don't think they should include Ray. Ray head is too big for any group. That's why he's solo. Just saying. Um... But I was feeling Jay Boog in this conversation. I was like, like, yeah, B2K was way bigger than some Ray J Brandy little brother. Don't even look at their category, they catalog compared to um, Ray J catalog. Like, Ray, calm down. Don't act like you popping like that. Now, you had a couple of hits here and there, but they were never on the level of B2K. And... I don't think they were on the level of B2K solo, but okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just felt like he was wrong. But, um, Boog was like, you know, I don't think it's not, it's not going to work without the original members. And it's not. It's never going to work. If, like, if y'all can't get them back together, just, I'm just sorry. Let it go. Um, 
Then he, <laughs> Ray was just doing the most, so Book was getting irritated. Both of them was kind of throwing shots at each other, but when Book called him a fake Michael Jackson, I fell out. Then Ray was talking about, he threw shots about them, him bringing the vocals to the group. I'm like, what? Are you serious, Ray? Are you serious? Like, humble yourself, little boy. Like, come on. And I like Ray J songs. Ray J as a person... He just irritates me to be so damn old and act so young. So, I, mm. Um, but then he started, he got mad. It seemed like, you know, when people can't take words or don't know what else to say. So, then now they want to go outside and take a fade and all this. And Jay Boog was not shook whatsoever. Like, boy, we are both grown men now. I will run it with you. Um, he was like, okay, I'll be outside. Then, all of a sudden, Ray started, he kept talking stuff, and Fizz was getting irritated. Then, Ray was like, he wanted to run it with Fizz, and I'm sitting there like, boy, them boys is going to whoop your ass. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I just didn't see that going well, because y'all noticed it wasn't going to go well when them producers was like, wait, hold on, let me run up in here. Everybody ran up in there when once Ray said, take this fade, because they didn't know which way it was going to go. Well, both of them boys going to be beating that boy ass, period, point blank. Ray can act like he hard all he want to, but it wasn't going to end well in his favor. I'm sorry. Keisha um, and Booby, they at their lawyer's office and finalizing their divorce after I don't know how many years so I didn't care they both have been sleeping with and dating and all kind of other people so when it came to this part I was just like mm, okay he tried to hug her and she was like no that was so funny when he was like I love you she was like oh cool I was fell out it's like she is not trying it's like at this time of filming, Keisha is dating somebody, so she is not trying to mess that up because of him. So she is not trying to give him no kind of nothing on camera. That's how it feel to me. I could be wrong. Um, World on Wheels, that's the spot. That was the spot for everybody in California. Like, everybody had to go to World on Wheels. Um, it's like, I think it's Cascades in, in Atlanta. That's what World on Wheels is for people in California. So I was excited. They just reopened it because it was shut down for years because of all of the game banging and drama and shooting and fighting that was going up in there. I'm telling you, it was a spot. Um, so they just reopened it and kind of made it upscale. But it wasn't that damn upscale because my homeboy iPad mini got stolen up out of there out of his backpack. I'm just saying so. Ain't that damn upscale. <laughs> but they were there skating. And they were just talking about the whole B2K situation. And Safari is laughing at Ray because he know that was just not going to work. It, it just wasn't going to happen. He told him to squash it. It wasn't that serious. Um, what else happened on that part? Oh, Safari said he moving back to New York and he want to have a going away party. Okay. We, we all kind of know that was going to happen. So it wasn't no big, ooh, okay. Um, yes, he Ortiz is um, hosting Ladies Night of Hip Hop and R&B, and that's when they have to showcase. Donatella kind of gets on uh, Masika for whooping up on Hazel. She was like, she's so shady. She was just like, I just saw this, and I heard, I seen you just pounding on her a couple of times. I fell out. I was like, girl, I just want to see the, the back. Somebody sent me the full fight, and I'm going to watch it after I do these reviews, but I'm just saying. I was here for it. Um, also, what else did they talk about? Oh, she said that Hazel not going to be there because Hazel gave her an ultimatum and she ain't playing them ultimatums with Hazel, so Hazel ain't getting up on that stage. Masika with her big-headed ego ass talking about, oh, it's good because she don't need to be sharing the stage with talented people or some shit she said, and I was just like, okay. Now. I got, I, I like some of her songs that just be like party songs, I bump, you know what I'm saying, but talented vocals, leave that to Moniz, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, um, cause that new song that she had performed, this one was alright, I don't know if it's the same song that they play sections, because that other one that she did when she had that showcase, I listened to that song. And I was here for the beginning, and then it turned into something else, and I was like, this don't fit. So, 
I couldn't do it. And if y'all check out my website tomorrow, I will be having up the Reality Stars Music of the Week for all of the reality stars that put out good music, but might be in a little bullshit drama on TV, but they still put out good music. I'm going to have that up on my website, so please check it out at um, it's all about support .com. Just check out my website. I always have new music for independent artists up there, so check it out. Um, yeah, I'm always gonna plug myself. Just saying. Anyway, um, yeah. So they had the showcase, and Masika went first. Okay, Masika went first. <laughs> okay, then Brooke and Bridget get into it because Brooke decides to go and talk to Brooke and call her a fake what she said the worst best friend award and I'm like but when was y'all best friends she was Marcus friend she was never your friend I don't understand why this girl her mind I don't understand Brooke I really don't and like I said I will have some music on my website and her song one of her songs from you know a couple of years ago it's going to be one of the songs and I'm like oh my god why did you ruin your reputation oh my god cuz your talent you got talent Masika you talk about people with talent she has talent just saying and I give props to people they deserve them when it comes to talent I got you but her reputation kills it um but she goes up to Brooke and calls her the worst best friend or whatever they going back and forth about booby and the new song and and I'm so with Brooke I mean Bridget she did not steal that song your boyfriend whoever he is today gave her that song so i don't understand where she never even went to him and said hey i need you to make me a hot hit her boyfriend went to marcus marcus said since she's my friend i'm gonna make her a song marcus decided to give her your song because he was being mean and petty to you it didn't have nothing to do with bridget so she need to kill it with that and keep calling her a backup singer and all of that like girl stop Stop. You can call some of the other girls up on here backup singers when it but it I in as much as I don't too much care for Bridget either. Like you cannot deny her talent. And I hate that she tries to diminish Bridget talent. And like Bridget said, like girl, I write songs that win Grammys. Did you see Brooke face when she said that? Brooke, where's your Grammy? That's all I'm saying. Where's your BT award? Where's your I'm just oh my gosh, she needs to humble herself. She really needs to humble herself and she irritates me fighting over dudes. And then she was saying she looked like a bag of money. Brooke was like, no, bitch. You look like these salty pretzels and threw them at her. I know, and she was like, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. But I'm like, if that was Hazel, would you allow her to even get that close? Would you allow her to say all the things that she said to you? Would you allow her to throw anything at you and not budge? Like, girl, okay, y'all friends. When that bitch would have threw something at me, bitch, friendship, when all of that that we said we wasn't going to do, would have went all out the window. Therefore, you would have got all these hands. Like, remember Houston throw hands? Girl, stop. Stop. This is why I say people need to stop throwing out cities that throw hands because Brooke just showed us, like, I'm just saying, like, and I'm not saying that people in in Houston don't throw hands because I know a lot of people that out that's out there that will throw them hands. Brooke just not one of them. Brooke throw hands to people that she thinks she'll win. I'm just saying. So anyway, Bridget goes on, but while Bridget is going on singing, um, which she both of both of the ladies did good. I told you they got talent. But while she's singing, Booby comes in with these these flowers so i'm thinking okay well maybe they're to bridget because remember at the end of the other one they kissed but they said they was cool on each other with him and brooke but no he went and gave him to brooke and brooke confronted him about the catalina island thing then he got the sense of like girl what did you think i was gonna do the thing guys do when they get caught up on some shit that they done which i wasn't made mad at him for taking brooke because he you know whatever but i just felt like y'all both stupid Y'all both stupid. This is stupid. Um, 
she was like, did you dig her down? I'm like, why, girl? They went to Catalina. What do you think? You just said that uh, her his dick was in her mouth. So you think she didn't get the dick? You think she just sucked it? Like, you think he didn't touch his? You? I'm just saying. Like, I don't understand when people, act, when grown people have sex, people ask, what did y'all do? Everything. Whatever you think they done, they done it. They grown. I, I, I don't understand when people be like, well, you sucked his dick. Well, he ate her out, too. Trust and believe. Whatever you throwing at her, he did it, too. Um, He didn't answer that question, but we all know what went down. And then she said, she, well, she got to figure things out with Marcus and all that. And I'm like, girl, shut up. Anyway, Ray J says and J-Bug meet up for all of them to apologize for their actions, their words, and how it got misconstrued. But it still seemed like Ray was on the defense and was trying to defend he he they J Book kept saying, I apologize if I offended you and he kept on saying, Well you said this, well you said that and I'm like, How many times do we have to apologize that you're not getting it, Ray? Like you're getting on my nerve. Then he you know, they say they gonna keep on grinding, it is what it is. Brooke and Marcus meet up. At this time the Hurricane Harvey had affected her family, so she was really bothered by that. We all have had family or friends affected by Hurricane Harvey. So, you know, my heart went out to her family. Um, then they started talking about her relationship with Marcus. And she didn't think that Marcus was as serious as she was with him because of the wife's situation and Jay's situation. And he was like, well, I'm going to show you how serious I was or something, he said. And he pulls out the ring that he bought her. He just always carrying around his damn ring, whether it's in the backpack, the pocket. He just always carrying around his ring because he said he can't take it back to the store. She was like, oh, Marcus. Oh, and she tried to hug him. He was like, wait, hold up. Hold up, we ain't there yet. We need, we trying to get back there. We need to get there, but we ain't there yet. I fell out. Because I was just like, oops, X on your face, boo boo. <laughs> that, I mean, the, her whole face was like, oops. Just saying. Um, but they going to get back together at least until the reunion coming. All kind of stuff be brought back up. I don't know. Safari going away party. He performed some song about some haters. Some people just need to be songwriters. Just saying. Producers. Stuff like that. Just saying. Everybody there. Everybody got on white. Boobie. Zell. Bridget. Monice. AD. You know the usual. The, the, the cast of Love and Hip Hop is there. A couple of with some extras. Um, and they're having fun. AD comes in, apologize to Monice. Monice say, let me think about it. So that it, but we know they back together. Um, Bridget confronts Booby about inviting homegirl first. And he still flirts with her. Still, I was just over it. I was just so over it. I was looking at them like this. Zell still being Zell, so I didn't care. Um... Hazel confronts Ray J, but Ray J was like, girl, you, he, he, he switched, he turned that around on her. I ain't heard the song. I ain't trying to hear the song. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm all about support, so I'm going to listen to the song. And if it's a good song, I will put it in my music of the week reality stars, but I really doubt it. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, she confronts him and he said that. He, he was just trying to basically make her prove herself. So she didn't go hard on him. Didn't throw no dicks at him. And it, it was what it was with them. Um, Tierra singing in this thing at the end. And Cisco walks in. She rehearsing somewhere. And Cisco walks in. And they argue about him not being there. Him thinking she really didn't need rehab. I'm like, boy... Everybody saw she needed rehab. She needed help. Like, I don't understand him. He was still trying to lie about him messing with the other girl. I think her name Amber. And she was like, just own it. Just own you messed up. And then all of a sudden, he just had to own he messed up. And I'm just like, whatever. So then they show what's everybody doing, going to be doing. I don't know. Everybody going to be working on their music. I ain't got time to be going through line by line of who doing what. Everybody working on their music. Zell still a fraud. Alexis still trying to chase Cloud. I don't, I don't know. And why I say Zell is a fraud is because all through this season, he has been saying how he got this, he got this. 
And then I seen an interview on Hollywood Unlocked with Jason Lee. And he was talking about how he was staying in a motel. Not a hotel, a motel. How he was struggling. How he was doing this and that. But I'm like, on the whole season, you act like you was swagged out. I hate people that just, if you don't got it, you just don't got it. I hate people to be trying to big themselves up, put other people down, and knowing they don't fucking got it. You were talking about her Section 8, but you were staying in a motel. At least she paying a little bit of rent instead of paying weekly or daily or whatever. Like, come on. I hate when people, don't put nobody else down. If you're going through some struggles, you're damn self. That's why I don't like Zell Swag. Um, and he's a backstabber. I don't care what nobody say. He's a backstabber. But that's my review for Loving Hip Hop Hollywood Season 4, Episode 14. I will be right back with the reunion part one. Follow me on all social media sites by the ghetto view, T-H-A, not T-H-E. And I will talk to y'all in the next video. Peace.